This is the ultrasound machine that you'll be using throughout your time in the Diagnostic Medical Sonography program here at VCU. This is called an Epic Phillips machine and I'm just going to go over briefly how you manipulate this particular machine. If you notice down here at the floor there's a foot pedal. If you put the foot pedal in the middle it allows the legs to rotate in a circle. If you bring the foot pedal all the way up it allows the legs to lock and for you to steer. Once you're in a position in the patient's room or in your imaging room and you want to lock your machine into place so it does not move, you would want to press your foot pedal all the way down and that prevents the ultrasound machine from moving. That is in the brake position. So you have down for brake, middle for steer, and all the way up to lock your wheels in place and glide in the left or right direction. Now let's go over manipulations of some of the machine controls. In order to turn on your machine, you have to press this button here, which is our power machine. This, is a this allows our machine to boot up. And we'll just give that a moment. Once the machine boots, you'll see information in both the upper monitor and the touch screen monitor, which is located here. We'll just give that some time to boot up. Now that the machine is fully booted, you'll notice that our touch screen here is illuminating, and then you have the main monitor screen. In addition to our touch screen being illuminating, our main keyboard there is operable. And then we have this sliding keyboard here that allows you to type annotations on your images that you take. And you just simply push that in, use this little cuff to pull that out. Now if you're in a room with a patient and you feel like you need to scan from the opposite side of the bed, you have this capability with the Philips machine. In order to move this particular motherboard here, you would press this button here that's seen inside of the handle. Press it one time, it illuminates, and it allows you to swing your machine either direction. Once you get into a position that you want to be in, simply press that button again and it locks it back into place. Before you begin your ultrasound exam, you would need to find your patient's name on your work list. And by doing that, you would need to press the patient button, which brings up this screen here. And had we been connected to a wrist system, all of the patients that are ordered would be listed here in this area. If your patient is not listed, you can also type in the information here. And the most important part would be the patient's last name, first name, their patient ID or medical record number, their date of birth, gender, the session number located with, um, associated with the order, and then you would take a picture of that screen. So just to give you an example, I'll go ahead and input some information. As you can see here, I've inputted some fictitious information. And if you would like, you can use the study type here. And if I was to choose abdomen, it will allow me to take a history here on this page as well. You can notate the patient's area of pain, any kind of indications that they have. have <clears throat> If a patient has a gallbladder or not, cholecystectomy, 
um, or if the patient has a TIPS. This particular page should be the first page of any ultrasound examination that you would do. So you would simply just take a picture of this by pressing this button here. You should hear a click as you just heard and if you use your cursor to press done. What you'll see here imprinted on the screen is your patient's first and last name, their medical record number, their date of birth, and the date and usually the time that the exam is being completed. If you like to manipulate between the different types of transducers that you need to utilize in your ultrasound examination, you simply go here to your touch screen and any transducer that is plugged into your machine, you'll be able to see in this area here. So in order to complete this abdominal ultrasound that we'll be doing, we will want to choose the C92. And here are the different protocols related to that particular transducer. We will choose abdomen gen for abdomen general. This allows us to activate this particular curvy linear probe. And I call it curvy linear because of the curvature shape of the probe. If you're ever looking at ultrasound images, you can kind of tell the type of transducer that is being used. For transducers that are curvy linear shaped transducers, you will see a curved portion of the top part of the ultrasound image. If you wanted to change the type of transducer that you are using, you can remove the transducers from any of the ports located here. Before you remove an active transducer, it is best to come to your touch screen, choose another transducer that you will not be taken out of its port below, and then proceed to take that particular transducer out of the port. So because I just switched from the curvilinear probe to the transvaginal probe, it is safe for me to unlock by pushing this lever and taking the curvilinear probe out. And because I want to insert a linear transducer, I will now take it, put it into the port, and lock it in place. Because I've now locked the 12.5 into place, the 12.5 will show up now as an optional transducer to be used on this particular machine. Now I will choose the 12.5 and let's say we're going to look at someone's legs for a DVT study. This is the transducer that you'll be using. It is a linear transducer. And again, as I mentioned, in order for you to determine what type of transducer was used for the curvy linear probe, you saw a curve at the top of the screen. For the linear probe, the image at the top of the screen is in a line or linear. So that's how you can determine the type of transducer that was being used. You can also look at information that is located on the screen. As you see here, the 12.5 transducer was used, the, and the vascular venous preset was used for this particular image, if we was to take one. Now, if you want to take an image, what you'll have to do is click the freeze button located here, and I'm going to show you I'm going to freeze it. The image here says frozen. And then I want to take that picture, so I'm going to acquire. And any image that you take will be seen on this side of your screen. As you can see here, this is the first image of our information page. And this is the blank image that I just took. There will be several different types of transducers that you'll use in the lab in your clinical environment and in your work environment. 
This particular probe that you see here is a curvilinear probe that is used for abdominal structures. This particular probe here has a smaller footprint as compared to this probe. And it's actually used for visualizing the internal components of the neonatal brain. This particular transducer here is a very big transducer. It has a very large footprint that is more curved than our curvilinear that I just demonstrated. This particular probe is our 3D ultrasound probe that will be used in a lot of obstetric ultrasound exams. And these two probes here are the linear probes that you'll be using. This particular probe here is a linear probe, however, the footprint is much wider than this particular linear probe, as you can see. This particular probe here is used for thyroids and scrotal ultrasound exams. This linear probe here is used for DVT studies of the legs and or the arms. In addition, this is another transducer that you'll become very much acquainted with. This is considered our transvaginal ultrasound probe. Again, it has a curvilinear footprint, so the images taken with this will have a curved appearance at the top of the screen. That one is used for visualizing early pregnancies, the uterus, and or ovaries. This particular transducer here is known to many as a hockey stick probe. And as you can see, it has the appearance of a hockey stick. This is used for superficial structures and MSK anatomy. Much of what sonographers do is as they're finding the anatomy in the images that they want to take, they do a lot of freezing of the ultrasound image and before they actually take the image they have to annotate. Some ultrasound machines come with annotations already preset into the machine or you can annotate on your own by pressing the ABC button. I'll show you. By pressing the ABC button the cursor appears on the ultrasound screen and you can annotate from there. So I'll just put right common femoral vein. Once your annotation that relates to your image on the screen is correct, then you want to press the acquire button to take a picture of the screen. And again, the image will show up on that side. Now if you were to take a picture and as you're going through your ultrasound examination you realize that you found a better picture, if the images have not sent to PACS, you have the ability to delete an image before it goes to PACS. So if you notice in my second image, I did not annotate or add words to that image to give a description. Most annotations are one or two words long. Most importantly, it's going to be the plane, which is either going to be transverse or sagittal and then the anatomy that you're actually imaging. So as I mentioned, the second image here, I did not annotate. So I'm going to use my cursor, come over to that image, choose it by clicking this button here on our machine. And then I'm going to click erase, which is seen again here and it allows an X to come on the picture. Once I end my exam, which will be seen here, that picture number two is no longer part of the patient study. I'll show you an example. As I press end exam, the image will go, go away. Our front screen will appear and you'll be able to go on to your next patient. Now, if you'll like to write up your preliminary report based on the images that you just 
create it, you can go to your touch screen, click review. It will allow you to see all of the ultrasound exams that you have completed on this particular machine only. Because this is our student that we just did, practice student, I will double click on the image on that student's, on that line item. And the images that were taken will appear here. And as you notice, I initially had three images. I deleted one that only leaves two images available. You can see a bigger version of the image if you was to toggle between the review page as you see here currently it's on the first image I'm going to turn my dial to the right review page two of two and it shows the second image if you double click on the image by using this button here it gives you a bigger version of that image there are many settings on the ultrasound machine that you'll be using as an ultrasound student. For this intro to, the, intro to sonography course, the only buttons that I would want you to remember is the power button seen here in the left upper corner of the machine. The freeze button located here, which allows you to freeze an image and the acquire button which allows you to take that particular image. ABC or annotate allows you to annotate your image. Again two things that are required on your annotation is going to be the plane that you're imaging in rather that sagittal or longitudinal. Those words are used interchangeably or transverse and if you're using 3D coronal. Other buttons that you'll utilize would be the color button which is self-explanatory, pulse wave button again which is self-explanatory, power, color doppler, depth which allows you to determine how deep you want to image and your focus. Your focus is this particular line here on the ultrasound machine and if I turned it to the right the focus goes down. If I turn that dial to the left the focus goes up. The last feature related to the ultrasound machine particularly the ultrasound transducer that I want you to be familiar with is called the notch. This particular groove or uh, bumpy area is located on all ultrasound transducers. It allows you to determine what position your ultrasound probe is in. If you're imaging an ultrasound, if you're imaging a patient's abdomen and the notch is towards the patient's head, this means you're in the longitudinal or sagittal plane. If you turn your notch to the right side of your patient, if your patient was lying down on the stretcher, this notch is now turned to your patient's right. This will be considered the transverse plane. The transverse plane is like a cross section of the anatomy that you are imaging. The sagittal or longitudinal plane is the long, longest dimension of the anatomy that you are imaging. When annotating, you want to make sure you include, again, sagittal or SAG, which means sagittal, or TRV, which means transverse. As you can see here, sagittal aorta prox means we're imaging in the sagittal, pla sagittal plane, we're imaging the aorta, and we're actually imaging the proximal area of the aorta. When I, when I turn my transducer in the transverse plane, it is imperative that I change sag to 
TRV, again, which represents transverse plane, which is, again, a cross-section of the aorta.